please join in singing our processional hymn and wave your palm crosses. Good morning. Good morning. How is everyone? Yes. Welcome to our Palm Sunday worship. We appreciate you being here. If you're here in person for this community experience, if you're joining us online, thank you for joining us there as well. We are mask optional, so we ask you respect each other's choices on that. And if you do feel sick, please uh, feel free to stay home and watch us online. You can join us as well that way. Mm -hmm. We do have refreshments after worship today. If you want to join us back there, we have some home-baked goodies and some individually wrapped goodies. The weekly Bible study continues this week. Uh, Thursday at 10 a.m. I upload a recording, and if you want to join in with that, we are on Acts chapter 16 for that. Uh, parking, if you're able to walk a little bit further, please uh, do so. You can even park over at the funeral homes on Sunday morning. They, are not, uh, they don't have business hours, so they let us park over there on Sundays as well. Uh, the attendance booklets are in the center aisle, so we ask that you sign that, pass it down the pew, and then pass it back again so that we know you have been here. We do have communion today, although we will receive it in a continuous fashion, which means you will come up the side aisles, receive the bread and wine, and then continue back the center aisle to return to your seats. Um, if you do wish to have a gluten-free wafer, please come to see me. I'll be over on this side this morning. Uh, this week, we also have our Monday Thursday and Good Friday worships. Each of those will be at 10 a.m., so we invite you to join us for that. And next Sunday, we have uh, Easter brunch between 8.30 and 9.30 a.m., if you uh, still want to bring an egg casserole, we invite you to do that. Uh, there's a form back there on the welcome table. You can sign and let us know that you'll be doing that. Also, um, within worship, <laughs> don't just come for breakfast. Stay for worship <laughs> at 10 a.m. So now we will continue with our call to worship. Uh, Chuck is going to sing the, the uh, verses for us, and then we'll all join in on the refrain. And once again, we'll wave our palm branches during that. Paul. 
palms and blossoms gay are strewn this day in festal preparation where Jesus comes to wipe our tears away. He now the throng to welcome him prepare. Join all and sing his name declare. Let every voice resound with antiquation. Hosanna, praise to the Lord, bless him who cometh to bring us salvation. Bless Jerusalem, of all thy sons sing emancipation, through boundless love, the Christ of Bethlehem brings faith and hope to thee forevermore. Join all and sing his name, declare. Let every voice resound with acclamation. Hosanna, praise ye the Lord. Bless him who cometh to bring us salvation. As you're able, I invite you to stand and join in with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who writes the law on our hearts who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things and for sins only you know. Forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated as we continue with our readings for today. Thank you, Diane. Our first reading is from the 50th chapter of Isaiah. The image of the servant of God is one of the mo notable motifs in the book of Isaiah. Today's reading describes the mission of the servant whom early Christians associated with Jesus. Like Jesus, the servant does not strike back at his detractors, but trusts in God's steadfast love. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, 
that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Let us sing responsively Psalm 31. Our second reading is taken from the second chapter of Philippians. Christ did not act to attain status and glory, but was obedient to God, even to the point of death. Following Christ's examples, we do not seek personal status or glory, but care for others as God cared for us in Christ's death. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, the word of the Lord. We sing right on, right on in majesty. It's printed in your bulletin.
As you're able, I invite you to stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark in the 11th chapter. Today we use the story of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and sat on it. And he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the Twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, Jesus, Jesus our risen Savior and Lord, and the Holy Spirit, our comforter and our teacher. A pastor was walking down the street when he came upon this circle of boys, all of them between the ages of 10 and 12. And the group had surrounded a, a dog. And the pastor was concerned about what the boys might be doing with that dog, so he went over and asked him, what are you doing with this dog? And one of the boys replied, this dog is just a, a stray from the neighborhood, and we all want him, but only one of us can take him home. So we have decided, whichever one of us can tell the biggest lie, we get to keep the dog. <laughs> and the pastor was shocked. He says, you boys should not be having a contest about telling lies. And then he broke into this 10-minute long sermon, starting out with, don't you know, boys know it's a sin to lie? And then he finished up with us, why, when I was your age, I never told a lie. <laughs> and the boys were all silent for a while. And just as the pastor was beginning to think, he really got through to them with that sermon. The youngest boy says, all right, the pastor wins. Give him the dog. <laughs> it really has nothing to do with Palm Sunday. I just like the joke. Palm Sunday was so named because of the crowds waving the branches and throwing them along the road as Jesus rode the colt into Jerusalem. And in those days, uh, people used palm branches to celebrate victories. Sort of like today, you know, in a parade, we might have confetti, we might have streamers or something like that to display the celebration. So the crowds had gathered along the roadside as if they were going to watch a parade. And they're shouting out hosannas which is the Hebrew word for save us. And it's used also to express adoration, praise, joy. So they were acknowledging Jesus as the Messiah. We call this gospel story Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Even today, 
We consider it a day of celebration. We sang those festive songs. We waved our palm crosses. And for them, it was pulling together all of the hopes that have been generated throughout all of history up until this gospel story. Not only that, pulling together all of the hopes of the Jewish people who have had for generations that they had been longing for the promised Messiah. Like those people gathered along the side of the road on that first Palm Sunday, we all focus our hopes, our desires on the one who will redeem the world, the one who will change everything for the better. There is, for me at least, somewhat of a puzzle in this story. Jesus is riding into Jerusalem actually on a young donkey. Some translator made the decision to use the word colt. And in my uh, experience at least, when I hear the word colt, I think of a horse. But the Greek word just means foal or a offspring. For Jesus, it was a young donkey, not a horse, that they found tied up in the city. The people of Jerusalem would have expected the long-awaited Messiah to be a king in line with David, entering Jerusalem to restore autonomy, to restore authority to Israel. The expectation would be for the king to expel the Roman Gentiles, the oppressors. The Messiah could be a king, could be the one who would lead Israel's armies, just like King David did, in victory over their enemies. So there was that expectation. This long-awaited Messiah would lead the armies of Israel into victory against these Roman Gentile oppressors and establish once again the Jewish state, independent of any oppressors. The foal of a donkey is the exact opposite of what a typical animal the king would ride into the city. Usually kings ride on horses, in particular war horses. Jesus rides in on this young offspring of a donkey. And I, as I try to imagine that, I, I can almost imagine Jesus' feet almost dragging on the ground. He has to hold them up. There is a sense in which this could be seen as a, a parody, a sign of the unexpected in what Jesus does. It certainly gives us a sign of, of modesty, of humility. Jesus is willing to accept that, not something a king or, or most political leaders like Pontius Pilate or somebody like that would have accepted. Many political leaders seek the spotlight. They seek the higher offices, the adulation of the crowds. And when Jesus listens to these accolades of the crowds, calling for the restoration of the kingdom of David, he knows he is not going to do what they expect him to do. On the one hand, Jesus is acknowledging those expectations. On the other hand, he knows that's not what he came to do. This is a, yet another sign that Jesus knows what is going to happen by the end of that week. He knows what's coming. Jesus' triumphal entry on the foal of a donkey is a clear sign that he is not a general. He is not that kind of king. So there is a sense of uncertainty still 
for the crowds. They know what they want, but they don't see what they expect. Meanwhile, history also records that in another part of Jerusalem, another entrance was happening. Entering by another road was Pontius Pilate with his banners, his legions of soldiers. They demonstrated Rome's power. Pilate entered, probably seated on a war horse. And such a horse demonstrated that Pilate had authority. Pilate had position. Another crowd likely yelling out, Hosanna, save us asking Rome to save them or to keep them safe. What a contrast. What a contrast Pilate's entry must have been when compared to Jesus and honestly his ragtag bunch of disciples who were just common folk, they probably didn't even march in a straight line. They didn't wear fancy clothing. They didn't have uniforms. They didn't carry swords and shields and spears. They probably had bags in which they carried everything they owned. Think about it. At that time, had you been living, which parade would you have stuck around to see? Since that day, and even after the death and resurrection of Jesus, people still have a choice. Which parade will you follow? Will we live by seeking earthly power and security, or by seeking God and God's righteousness? I wonder if that sounds like an easier decision than it really is. Certainly in hindsight, the resurrection provides us the knowledge that we want to follow Jesus. We want to be assured of that eternal life. Yet life in this world also has its enticements. It also has its temptations. We want to be assured of safety in this life. As a society, we've poured millions of dollars into making sure that we live a secure life. Right down to medicine cabinets that are full of medications to guarantee that we don't have to suffer even from any ache or pain. We need money to live, absolutely. Although we may have some difficulty sometimes determining how much is enough, especially as the newest and latest and greatest becomes available. People line up for blocks, for hours, to get the newest, latest, greatest, especially when new phones come out. Also, we are discouraged on every side. We want the money. We want to help people. We're tempted to invest and save for our own benefits, for retirement to make sure you all are secure in retirement, for me to make sure I have a retirement. Or against a loss of income, against any kind of uncertainty. What was the future going to hold? We don't know. Nobody anticipated a pandemic. Jesus and the kingdom of God offer somewhat of a counter-cultural idea in that regard. As Christians, we're encouraged to share out of our abundance that God gives us 
to provide care for those who do not have the kind of abundance we might have, what we might call the marginalized, the downtrodden, the poor, the outcast. Such a path can sound foolish when it's compared to societal aspirations to improve on our own situation, our own station in life, to put ourselves first, to make sure we're taken care of, and our children, our grandchildren. Christ followers might be asked to pay too high of a price. Just a few chapters earlier, Jesus had told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. In just a few days from this story, those same disciples will remember what Jesus said. And when they see Jesus literally picking up a cross and beginning that long march through the streets of Jerusalem outside the city to the hill called Golgotha. As we look back across history, we know by the end of this week, the cries of the crowd will turn from Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, to crucify him. By Palm Sunday, Jesus actually had attracted quite a following. There are some section of the Bible that say he had as many as 120. And that was counting the men because they were chauvinistic back then. If you add in women and children, that crowd grows larger. And five days later, they all scatter like leaves on a strong wind. Jesus did not turn out to be the Messiah that the people wanted. They wanted him to overthrow the Romans, those who were oppressing them. When Jesus did not bring them comfort and security, they deserted him, including his own disciples, including his very inner circle, the 12 apostles. We live in an era now of instant gratification. We get mad when the fast food place doesn't have our burger ready by the time we drive three seconds from the windows. We can often be a fickle bunch, too. If we can't get what we want in one place, we just go to the next place. I think just in this nearest shopping center here, there's five banks. Five banks. Between here and just a little bit past 301, we have Winn-Dixie, Publix, Walmart, Aldi, Save-A-Lot, and I don't know where else you can get groceries, but probably some other places. And if you're here for a while and you don't like the way I preach, there's 13 other churches just here in Sun City Center. We have choices. By the end of the story, Jesus enters into Jerusalem. I imagine there are people who are saying, who is this Jesus? Some may be asking, is Jesus going to live up to my expectations of what I think a leader or a king should be? And others may be asking, is Jesus going to give me what I want? Or will Jesus be my key to earthly success and comfort? Will he be the king that will keep me in a comfortable lifestyle, will make life better for me now? And when Jesus does not turn out to be what some people want him to be, even today people might start to create their own belief system, maybe take what they like from Christianity, mix it together a little bit, throw in some 
Judaism, throw in some Buddhism, throw in some Shintoism, maybe even throw in some Wiccan or something like that. Whatever those other beliefs are, sometimes people just bunch them together to form what they want them to be. And it likely gets rather confusing when people create God in their own image. And we might begin to wonder ourselves, who is this that they're talking about? And maybe the better question for us is to decide, how is the Jesus we read about in the Bible the Messiah or the Christ? And what does that Jesus tell us about God? And as we delve into those questions in God's word, and as we answer those questions for ourselves, then we can become better and ready to ask when others ask us, who is Jesus? And the crowds that gathered on that first Palm Sunday clearly proclaimed who Jesus was when they shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. And blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. So let us welcome Christ into our lives and celebrate Christ's power to transform us. Let us hold fast to God's vision for goodness, peace, and justice. Let us be filled with God's love and pour it into the people that we meet in this world. Amen. Amen. We sing number 344, all glory, laud, and honor.
As you're able, I invite you to stand and join in with our public profession of faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our service continues with the prayers of the people. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Blessed one, today the church sings glad hosannas as we enter Holy Week. Prepare us to bear witness to Christ's suffering and death endured for our sake. Gather your people around the cross and comfort us with resurrection hope. Hear us, O God. Renew your good creation and protect the balance of life on earth. Encourage the work of foresters, scientists, arborists, gardeners, and river keepers. We pray for the health of pollinating insects, songbirds, and native plants. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Establish peace and justice among the nations. Hold to account any with authority to judge others. Grant that courts, legislatures, and local governments will serve with integrity and compassion. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Bring hope to any who feel forsaken or forgotten. Make a way for refugees and asylum seekers. Reunite families enduring separation. We pray for any who are incarcerated institutionalized or in foster care, that they may know your love. Hear us, O God. Give energy and joy to our pastor, deacons, worship leaders, and musicians. Bless baptismal candidates, their sponsors, confirmands, and teachers. Watch over those who travel. Hear us, O God. Blessed one, our times are in your hand. Sustain us in discipleship throughout our lives and receive us into everlasting life. Your mercy is great. Blessed one, we pray that you will uplift those of our congregation who may be suffering physically, emotionally, or spiritually. Please bring healing, comfort, and peace to all those that we name in our hearts and minds. Hear us, O oh God. Blessed one, we pray that you watch over our first responders and military personnel and keep them safe, whether they are at home or overseas. Hold them in your loving hands and protect them as they protect us. Hear us, O oh God. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we gather our offering and listen to our choir anthem.
Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with the hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Speak to us, O Lord, in the breaking of the bread, and make us one with you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it for everyone to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who can. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Again, we have communion in a continuous fashion. The choir will go first. If you need a gluten-free wafer, come see me on this side. Please be seated for it all now is ready.
As you're able, I invite you to stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. O God of tender compassion, as you healed the sick and welcomed the stranger, bless those who leave this assembly to share the gifts of this table with our sisters and brothers who are sick, homebound, or imprisoned. May they be sustained by the love and prayers of this community and by the bread of life that satisfies all hunger. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we have one more anthem. And uh, note that at the last verse, we're all asked to stand when it says standing.
Now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look on us with favor and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, share your bread. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.